on a railroad line and I'm on my way to a tube of tattoo. I'm going to heaven on a railroad line and I'm on my way. Yes, I am. No more heartache, no more heartache, and no more tears, no tears. I hear that whistle blowing out. She's on her way to a tuba de doo. I found true love just in time. Yeah, she's on her way. Yeah, she is. No more screaming. I hear my head. And I won't be lonely in my big old bed. Just in time, she's on her way. Do, do ya do, do, do ya do. Do, do ya do, do, do ya do. Do ya, do ya. Do you want me just like I want you, Mr. James Montgomery? Mr. James Montgomery I've heard the new record and I love it. What I enjoyed the most was this new sound you've created that sounds fresh, very current, but also has this terrific tension, like some of Rock's great duos, like Lennon McCartney, Jagger Richards, Tyler and Joe Perry. Why don't you tell us about the new record? All right, so John and I have uh, been friends a long time. He's, I've uh, continued to put records out every 18 months, every two years, played around regionally. Uh, and and I always would call him and get him to play on a song. So we've been in touch um, throughout the years, not frequently, but but regularly. Um, so 
So I had stepped out of full-time music when my babies were born, 22 years ago. And, um, uh, and you know, I, I wanted to be a dad. You know, I wanted to be around for my kids. I went to work in high tech and, uh, and did that for 22 years and got the tap on the shoulder. Mm. Um, uh, I'd like to think of it as early retirement, but, <laughs> but it, was, it was an opportunity for me to give this guy a call who was going through something similar and say, you know what, this is stupid, let's do this, you know? And um, after talking on the phone for, for a couple of weeks, uh, he came out here and we did it. And here we are, you know, it's funny. It's funny, we kept thinking, I wish we could fast forward to, to being ready to do shows. I wish we could fast forward to having a record to work. And we're here. You know, we've I was in the same spot as he was too, in that the, the economy, the world economy was shifting, not in a good way. And so I was doing, uh, providing music soundtrack for film and television and uh, doing music, music licensing and, and it was great. I mean, I had some great years and made a good money. Around 2007, 2008, you could see the handwriting on the wall. Uh, the, the film production companies were, were using, were, were not commissioning me to do a queue a, a every six months or, or something every year and, and clients all dried up. Some guys went out of business and you could see that things were changing. So I was in a sort of a, I was wondering, well, this is my, you know, chapter two in my career. Looks like I got to be thinking about chapter <laughs> three. And, and almost after I got the words out of my mouth, the phone rang and it was Charlie. Yeah. So that's serendipity, right? I mean, you know, I, I, I took that to mean that's a sign and that uh, maybe it's time to move back to Boston. Jeez. In the middle of the worst winter we've ever had, it, New England's had in years. But he said, "Where does all the snow go?" <laughs> he, he meant, <laughs> yeah. So, so we were both uh, walking parallel, different roads, but parallel, and and realizing that not only were we in that situation where you're looking at a, a you know, a, another act in your in your career in life, your professional career, but a lot of people of our of our age group are going through the same thing. And it started to occur to us that that's a, th a theme that resonates with more than just me and Charlie. Um, people, people have lost their jobs or they're, or they're afraid they're going to lose their jobs. Or their marriages or have their dissolved, marriages. And, you know, after 15 or 16 years. And, and, and we're, we're the biggest demographic bubble, population bubble in, the his in history, right? And, and Baby boom. We're, going, we're experiencing that in record numbers. And so we thought, you know, let's let's comb through all the songs that we picked to record. We did about twenty, and and we picked we picked the, our, our best ones. But we combed through. We said, let's let's find the songs that address that. Let's find the songs that that are talking about you know empathy for a friend who's having trouble. Or talk about you know the 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 healing power of hopefulness. You know, um, the the strength of of being able to have hope or, or positive thinking. And so the record has that that thread through it, you know, songs, songs to say, no, you know what, you can't start a band, you know, in your 50s. You, you, could, you could rock a new guitar in your 50s and, and make that work. Uh, so that's our story, you know, and I think that, uh, I, I think that people are going to find the message to be uplifting and, and true. We even redid some of our older songs. Yeah, we did too. But we rewrote the lyrics because we ha they had to make sense to us today. We realized that, that uh, since we, as we weren't the only ones feeling this way, and we weren't ready to, you know, retire and, you know, read a book, we wanted to live still and write music and compose and maybe do a little bit of traveling, a little singing, and enjoy this next chapter, whatever it is. So it's kind of, a, it's a journey for sure, and we're both on it, but we're on it with about uh, how many, what, 30 million other people. Yeah. That's the way I figure it. So we'll see what happens, right?